is all busy. The scenery here looks different, too. Ooh, what should we do, Traveler? Please don't tell Paimon someone abducted us and brought us to some strange place that we could never leave. <sighs> You're right. Better to think of this as the beginning of a new adventure. <sighs> Thank goodness you're still here. If Paimon woke up alone, she probably would be trembling in a tree hollow. Traveler! Did those plants by the road look weird to you? It almost looked like they were made of paper. Oh, by the shade of a lotus leaf stream, don't tell me you forgot how to jump. I... I didn't forget, Firecracker. I'm just... not sure if what I remember is correct. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll have forgotten how to sing, much less notate a score. You still remember why we call you Stream, don't you? <laughs> yeah, because I've got a great singing voice. Although these days, the name seems more ironic than anything. Not just a great voice, one that evokes the gentleness of early morning dewdrops flowing into a spring. So cheer up and make the jump over. If you're still unsure, just use that roll of magic thread. I won't laugh, I promise. Now don't tell me you've forgotten how to use that as well. I haven't forgotten everything, Firecracker. Your name, for instance. It's kind of hard to forget that you're named after your fiery temper. Now do me a favor and pipe down for a second. I'll be right over. <laughs> you saw that too, right? Paimon's not seeing things, is she? <laughs> this place is getting more confusing by the second. Anyway, uh... Why don't we go after those two frogs? They didn't look evil or anything. Plus, they might be able to help us out. <laughs> Guess we're not catching up to those frogs. They were so fast. Paimon couldn't even tell where they hopped off to in the end. Uh, excuse me, honored travelers. Did you come from the Cliff of Prophecy, perchance? <gasps> the chubby paper hamster just talked! Chubby? Who are you calling chubby? I've just got a slightly thicker layer of paper on me, that's all. <clears throat> uh, allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Armand, and I'm an elder of the Forest of Blessings. Uh, I've been waiting here for the Hero of Prophecy to arrive. <laughs> Traveler, could you pinch Paimon just to make sure she's not still dreaming? Oh, pinching, you say? Well, I can help with that. Although you'll have to get a little closer. My arms are rather short. Need a minute to collect ourselves? Okay, let's think things through. <laughs> we know for sure this isn't the world we're familiar with. The talking paper animals and all the paper trees and plants make that pretty clear. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to the world. That is what the prophecy says. Oh, dearie me, I, I completely forgot to introduce you to this world, didn't I? Oh, and here I am, getting all excited by the arrival of the hero. You'll have to excuse me, this old brain isn't what it once was. All shell and no nut. Oh, well, perhaps my once glossy paper has faded past the point of no return. It's okay, really! You can just tell us all about this world now. Ah, oh, let me think. Hmm, where, where should I even begin? I've pretty much forgotten everything that happened in the past. Uh, right. I, I believe the story circulating along the pulp of this forest goes as follows. A, a long, long time ago, three goddesses created this world and named it Simulanka. The goddess of creation, who presides over matter and magic, created the mountains and rivers and gave us life. Her powers also paved the way for Simulanka to exist in numerous worlds. 
After the goddess of creation came the goddess of prophecy, with dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. She induced the sky to spin and the earth to move. Even to this day, her, her statue still stands tall at the highest point of constellation Metropole. The final goddess was the goddess of fate, she who reigns over all treasured tales and dearest wishes. She bestowed upon us the fierce and everlasting feelings of love and hate, and showed us the meaning of death and hope. Wow. They all seem super impressive. Sounds like they really did a lot. Of course. The all new residents of Simulanka come to the forest to thank the goddess of creation for founding this world and travel to Constellation Metropole to witness the divinations of the goddess of prophecy's numerous oracles. After that, they make their way to the end of the world and tell the goddess of fate about their most cherished dreams. <sighs> well, at least that's how it used to be. Uh, how it used to be? Did something bad happen? Oh, yeah. That has to do with the hero you're waiting for, right? Yes, yes this old, old brain of mine may have forgotten many things, but I will never forget the day the evil dragon descended upon our forest. It came down from the skies in an ominous black mist and ravaged our homeland. Its gigantic footprints can still be seen in the kingdom of breezes and bells. We're incredibly fortunate that no one was hurt. Sounds terrifying! The terror doesn't stop there, I'm afraid. Ever since the attack, the calligraphy tavern in the forest has been closed. No one knows why, but it's a catastrophe of the highest order for us, forest dwellers. Uh, a catastrophe of the highest order? All because a tavern closed? If we were talking about Mondstadt here, Paima might understand, but is it really all that serious? Good goddess of creation above. We'd take even the greatest flood over the closure of the tavern. Wet paper will dry out with time. Fallen trees can be restored. But the calligraphy tavern is the only source of the magic tonic that sustains all creatures in the forest. Magic what? Magic tonic. It was gifted to the forest by the goddess of creation herself. A special potion that helps us maintain our vitality. Well, our bodies will gradually crumple and become brittle until they eventually disintegrate entirely. Our colors will fade and we'll start to lose our memory until we can't even remember our own names. Uh, but wait, Grandpa Almond, does that mean you've already... Oh, I'm afraid so. The color has all but completely faded from my paper. To be honest, all I really remember is that I'm supposed to wait here for the Hero of Prophecy. But I've already forgotten who gave me that order to begin with. Then we've got to act fast! How can we help? Oh, brave Pixie. May the Goddess of Fate reward you and your friend for your kindness. Could it be your the heroes I've been waiting for all along? Um, not sure how we know that. Plus, we can't even remember how we got here, so it's not looking too promising. Well, uh, this is turning out to be quite the conundrum for old Armand Brain here. <laughs> the prophecy never mentioned anything like that. Uh, for now, why don't you come with me to the Hut of Blessings? Our forest fairy lives there. Maybe she'll know what to do. Whoa, a forest fairy? Like one that knows magic? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> She's prophesied to join the hero on their journey. Well, then, she sounds like exactly the kind of person we need. Please lead the way, Grandpa Almond. Uh, this is the place. If you could just wait a moment, the fairy should be. Traveler, Paimon! Paimon knows that voice! It's really you! I'm so happy to see you! Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. So Nilu is the 
forest fairy? Well, you certainly look the part. <laughs> Thank you. But to be honest, I'm still getting used to it. It's the weirdest thing. I remember I was reading a book at the Grand Bazaar, and then I guess I must have fallen asleep at some point because... Well, then I woke up dressed like this. And in my dream, someone spoke to me. They said, you are the fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Now go, save the forest with your magic. At first, I thought this whole world was just part of the dream. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to wake up. I couldn't find anyone I knew from the real world either. Sounds similar to what happened with us. We also have no idea how we got here. Anyway, sorry for my reaction back there. I got a bit too excited when I saw you two. It's okay, we totally understand. We were looking for a way out too. At least we know we're not alone. Oh, blessed be the goddess of fate above. You're already friends with the fairy of the forest. Grandpa Almond, thank you so much for bringing my friends here. Could you let the others know I'm coming? I'll head over right away. Uh, of course, leave it to me. Hey ho, pistachio. <laughs> Today truly is a blessed day. Wow, Nilu. Looks like you made short work of getting to know the locals. Well, when I arrived here yesterday, Grandpa Omen told me all about the state of this world. Since they think of me as their forest fairy, I just felt like I had to try to help them. Oh, so you mean like using some kind of forest magic to repair the tavern? Unfortunately, I don't know how to use the magic of this world. I've tried using my vision, but it doesn't seem to work here. If the books stored in this hut are anything to go by, this seems to be the place where the goddess of creation first made the townspeople of this forest. She folded the pages of books into small origami animals, gave them life with her magic, and with time, that's how the Forest of Blessings took shape. Hmm. Maybe one of the books here could teach us how to use magic. I read them all, but only found one reference to magic. The incantation, Abracadabra, means to create what I say. This is a world made up of words where fantastical powers can be wielded by all. Okay, so basically everyone in this world can use magic? That's nice, but still kind of vague. Yeah, from the other books I read, it seems like this goddess really likes to play fast and loose with the details. So, what should we do now? Um, didn't you say you were going somewhere, Nilu? Oh, yes. I was going to help some of the other residents of the forest. They've been busy making preparations to reopen the tavern, so I thought I could help out. Got it! Guess we should just focus on what we can do for now. This whole thing is making me pretty nervous, actually. It's like I've been pushed on stage without being taught the choreography. Since I'm already wearing the costume, though, I might as well try to play the part. It's what a professional dancer would do. And who knows? Maybe I'll find my own magic along the way. All I can do is try, right? At least you're optimistic! Thank you. Then let's go. Look, the forest fairy is here. And she brought her companions. Grandpa Almond was right. They do look promising. Hello there, everyone. I heard you were working on the piping for the calligraphy tavern. Is there anything we can do to help? Oh, we wouldn't dream of troubling you with our petty problems, my lady. Don't you worry, we have it all under control. Ah, uh, you sure about that? Because from where Paimon's floating, the piping is looking pretty chaotic. Ah, uh, yes. We have my careless friend to thank for that. He promised we could leave the pipe connecting to him, and... Well, the results speak for themselves. Hey, I just wanted to inspect each pipe. This is the network the magic tonic has to flow through. I was just trying to be thorough, so I... <laughs> I disassembled the whole thing. Yeah, and now you've forgotten how to put the thing back together. 
Have you been eating too many nuts again? Because you are what you eat. Please don't fight. I know everyone wants the tavern to reopen as soon as possible so that the forest can return to normal. So, why don't you let us help out? Yeah, we're here anyway, so we might as well be helpful. We just need to reassemble these pipes, right? Well, if you're offering... Basically, the pipes need to be connected properly to allow the magic tonic to flow through. If you put the wrong pipe in the wrong place, the tonic will get stuck halfway. Attention to detail is key. Says the guy who messed up the whole thing in the first place. Oh, amazing! You did it! Now the tonic will flow into everyone's cups without getting stuck, right? Oh, gotta say, though, Paimon is starting to get pretty curious about this magic tonic. Um, could she have a teeny tiny sip? Just a little taste, please? It's not greed, it's curiosity. Well, if it's really just one sip, I guess that would be fine. Just be careful. This is one of the last cups left in the entire forest. We're supposed to save it for our research. Just a sip! Promise! Okay, here it goes. We will... What? what was that? Oh, it's still kicking the Paimon's tongue! Uh, wait, is this just regular ink? Wait, does that mean... What the legend says is true? The goddess of fate used ink to compose her stories on paper, and the goddess of creation used her power to bring those tales to life. No wonder the tavern is so important to the forest. Maybe the fading disorder occurs when the ink within the body dries up. That would explain why the beings here are forgetting their own stories. Oh. I'm not really sure I can really wrap my head around this conversation, but there's no need to get all worked up on our behalf, my lady. With the pipe installed, I'm sure the tavern will be up and running in no time. Uh, what do you mean, can't wrap your head around it? The fairy is recounting the story of how the goddesses gave us life. In fact, I've seen the goddess of creation with my own eyes. Really? Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're old enough to have met her. We're the same age, and I think I would know considering we went to tell our wishes to the goddess of fate together. So stop talking a load of paper mache. Oh, fine. It was my grandfather, all right? He was the one that saw her. He said that one day after he finished work, he saw the goddess of creation grant us life with his own eyes. In her hands, she held the very paper used to form our bodies. She whispered something into the pages, and then suddenly a paper frog was born, ready to leap into the world. Oh, it was spectacular. Ugh, cut the theatrics, will you? You weren't even there. Wait, so that's it? Paimon thought creation magic would have a little bit more pizzazz. Oh. So, in your world, the creation of life is a much showier affair? Huh. I'm learning something new every day. Um, w well, that's not exactly what Paimon was trying to say. Magic doesn't have to be spectacular. That's enough out of you. All your boasting is confusing our kind fairy. Oh, no, it's all right. I actually think... I understand the magic of this world a bit better now. Thank you. The honor was all ours, milady. Oh, stream! Your rhythm is off again! At this rate, it doesn't even matter if the tavern reopens. The band's not even going to get any gigs! <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, hello there. I hope we aren't interrupting your rehearsal. Wait, these are the two frogs we saw on the road a little while ago. Oh, the forest fairy is here. For the love of lotus leaves and dewdrop stream, you've really got to put in some effort now. But I... Oh, don't pressure yourselves on my account. Are you rehearsing for a show? Sure are. You see, our group regularly performs for guests at the tavern. 
We've been out of work for quite some time, with the closure and all, uh, but after hearing of the fairy's arrival yesterday, we figured we needed to get in performance shape right away. <laughs> I understand how you feel. Back at the Grand Bazaar, Zubair Theater's always busy with rehearsals, too. The Grand Bazaar? Do people there sing on lotus leaves as well? Yeah, they do. And it's a really big one. You're the conductor of your group, aren't you? You remind me of Mr. Zubair. Ah, then he must be an ambitious director. One who would do anything to avoid disappointing a single member of the audience. It's just... Hmm. Is there anything we can do to help you, Mr. Stream? Oh, no, no. My problems are mine and mine alone. It's just, after the tavern closed, I somehow forgot how to sing. I'm always a few beats behind everyone else, and I keep singing out of key. You were our trump card, our best singer by a mile. I know, I know, but... <sighs> so he is a victim of the fading disorder, too? Don't be sad, Mr. Stream. Whenever I've forgotten important dance steps in the past, my friends at the Grand Bazaar always stick by my side to encourage me. They smile and patiently tell me everything's going to be okay. Then, they play the melody for me over and over, until the steps finally come back to me. Now, it's our turn to help you. We just need to help you remember how to sing, right? The Traveler's got a great sense of rhythm. We can help keep you in time. Well, what do you say, Stream? I think it's a great idea. Just focus on the lyrics, and the fairy's friends will help you stay on beat. Are... are you sure? This is really asking a lot. Don't worry about it, Mr. Stream. It'll all be worth it when the tavern reopens, and we finally have the chance to hear your marvelous singing voice. All right, then. Thank you so much, everyone. I I'll give it my best shot. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it again. Goddess is above. This better stick when it comes to the performance. Just do it exactly like how we rehearsed. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to you, my voice is once again as clear as a flowing stream. Glad to hear that you're feeling better, Mr. Stream. It's also about time for us to go to our next destination. Mm-hmm. We'll be looking forward to your performance at the tavern. Oh, my dear Citrus, please tell me you're joking. We can't have you out of commission with the tavern about to reopen. I'm sorry, Grandpa Almond. It's the truth. I was just too excited for the reopening and must have fallen asleep in an awkward position. Grandpa Almond, we're here to help! Oh, hazelnuts on high. You could not have come at a better time. Uh, please allow me to introduce you. This is the bartender of the Calligraphy Tavern, Miss Citrus. Uh, Miss Citrus is supposed to add all kinds of delicious fruits to the magic tonic. Her additions are what turn it into the finest brew in the land. She's indispensable to the operation of the tavern. I appreciate the kind words, Grandpa Almond, but... Ah, uh, my neck. Are you all right? Ah, uh, terrible timing. Getting a kink in my neck at a time like this? Could you give my tail a little twist? That should help free up the movement in my neck. I would do it myself, but I can't reach my own, and Grandpa Almond is too old and as light as a feather. The neck and tail are connected? Of course they're connected. Just like how you can't have a rainbow without rain. Anyway, you just need to position me at the right height to pick the fruits. And then put them in the barrel over there. Perfect. My neck feels much better. So there really is some kind of connection between your neck and tail. Thank you so much, everyone. I can rest easy now, knowing the drinks at the tavern will be just as wonderful as before. That's another problem solved! Well, since we've taken care of most of the tasks, all we need to do now is reopen the tavern. But 
we still don't know how to use the magic of this world. We don't even know why the tavern closed in the first place. <sighs> oh, what about the method that one hamster mentioned? You should try it, Nilu. You mean the creation magic his grandfather saw outside the hut of blessings? Hmm, I wonder. How exactly did the goddess of creation give them life? Maybe you don't need to understand it. Just give it a try. Everyone here calls you the forest fairy. Maybe you have the magic powers already and you just don't know it. In other words, this forest is a stage. And all I need to do is step out into the spotlight? <laughs> Sounds just like a fairy tale. Well, we are surrounded by talking origami animals and magic potions after all. Almost seems like anything's possible in this place. You're right, Paimon. We won't know anything unless we try. In that case, let's see. This is how you do it, right? I think I got the folds right. Oh, your origami skills are great! I once saw one of our prop people making something similar. It looked really cool, so I took some time during my break to learn the basics. It's not a bad way to stave off sleepiness either. Well, how do you feel? Sense any, uh, magical powers flowing through you? Mm. No. No? Hmm. What are we missing? Magic words? But how am I supposed to know what the goddess said to bring them to life? Oh, good point! You're the forest fairy, Nilu! What do you want to say to the new resident of your domain? <laughs> I bestow upon you the blessings of the forest and offer you a home in this land. Your name shall be Harisara. May you bloom in this world as beautifully as the flower I love. <sighs> My name is... Parisara. It worked! It actually worked! Well, peel my shell and call me a nut. <laughs> I never imagined I'd witness such a miracle at my age. <laughs> it's just like what the story said about the goddess of creation. Shell? Miracle? Nice to meet you, Padisara. I'm Nilu, the fairy of this forest. From this day forward, this place is now your home. Hello, fairy Nilu. I hope you'll grow up happily in this forest. Grow up. <laughs> oh, you can leave the little one with old Armand for now. Oh, uh, this sure brings back memories. <laughs> it's been such a long time since we last held a welcome ceremony. Here, Padisara. Hmm. Uh, come to Grandpa Armand. Well, now that Nilu has mastered the goddess's magic, we should be able to reopen the tavern, right? Hmm. Grandpa Almond, could you send a few people to check the underground space beneath the tavern? Oh, of course. Uh, may I ask why? The moment I used magic, I sensed something strange down there. I have a feeling it's connected to why the tavern had to close down. Uh, of course, we'll look into it right away. Make sure you listen to Grandpa Omen, Potty Sara. Don't go running off on your own. Potty Sara, listen. Running! Hey, come back here, you! Wait! Yep, that's Nilu's creation, all right! She's got so much energy. Anyway, how did you manage it, Nilu? Well, all I did was say my wishes for her out loud. Maybe the magic is in the words themselves, just like the book said. This place is seeming more like a fairy tale by the second. I mean, or some are called the Forest of Blessings, so it kind of makes sense. Well, anyway, Paimon thinks this magic suits you perfectly, Nilu. 
When I brought Parisara to life just now, I was able to sense the magic flowing through the forest, and the flowers and trees, and inside the creatures that live here. But for some reason, there's a hollowed out space beneath the tavern where I couldn't sense anything at all. We're back, my lady. That was fast. You were right. There was something under the tavern that I've never seen before. It looked transparent and gave off a clinking sound when I knocked on it. Transparent and clinking? Oh, I've got it! Uh, already? <laughs> You've got to use fairy tale logic, Paimon. That's right. An empty ink bottle, to be exact. Still remember the taste of the magic tonic you took a sip of, Paimon? Yeah, it was... ink. <gasps> oh, Paimon gets it now! Traveler, Paimon, will you come gather some ingredients with me? I learned what we need to make the magic tonic back in the Hut of Blessings. Sure thing! What do we need to get? Hmm. A setting sun that never sets. A dragon that cannot fly. And... A moon that only shines at night. I... Uh, where are we supposed to find crazy things like that? What? How did you get that so fast? Logic, huh? <laughs> Lucky guess more like. Give me just a second. I'm gonna go fetch an ink bottle from the other room. Get it. All the ingredients are super tasty, but somehow the final product turns into ink. Well, anyway, Paimon's not going anywhere near this stuff this time. Not even if you bribed her. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's see. According to the book, first you do this, then this, and then... It's done! Wow, magic sure makes everything super convenient. Yes, this is it. This is exactly the magic tonic we need. Grandpa Almond, could you take the concoction to the room underneath the tavern and place it next to the transparent bottle you found? I'll handle the rest. Of course. As you command, so it shall be done. <sighs> I still get nervous at times like this. It's just like when you step on stage and you can tell that every single person's gaze is fixed right on you. <laughs> Thanks, you two. I can't tell you how great it is to have you by my side. Almost makes me feel like I've been blessed by the goddess of fate, too. Let's go. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting. <sighs> Forest, please heed my words and accept my blessings. May your spring of wondrous magic never run dry. And may all who call you their home lead happy, fulfilling lives. Tavern! 
It matches the scenery of the forest perfectly. I was so surprised when it suddenly opened up like that. Just like a pop-up book. <sighs> I, I remember now. I remember everything. It was me. I was the one who went to the top of Constellation Metropole and witnessed the goddess's prophecy. The hero who shall save this world will descend upon the Cliff of Prophecy. The hero, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So the prophecy really did have all the answers, you just forgot the first half! That's why I was waiting near the Cliff of Prophecy. <laughs> wonderful, simply wonderful. There's still some hope left for old Armand after all. Is the Cliff of Prophecy that place with the huge mural? Cause that is where we woke up, but we don't remember anything about how we got there. Also, we didn't get a change of clothes like Nilu. Are we definitely the heroes? If not you, then who else? Uh, you, you've already helped the fairy revitalize our forest. To us, that makes you heroes. Prophesized or not. All right. Well, either way, we're going to keep adventuring, even if it's just to figure out how we can get back to our world. Yep, that's exactly right. Helping people we meet on the road is kind of our thing. As expected, the words of the goddess of prophecy always come true. I'll come with you. It can't hurt to have a magical fairy tag along, right? Heroes and fairies, dragons and new adventures. <laughs> this is sounding more and more like a fairy tale by the second. Hmm. I would say your next stop should be Constellation Metropole. It's Simulanka's most prosperous city, uh, just across the sea. Once you've arrived at the Astral Garden at the highest point in the city, uh, maybe you can try seeking divine counsel from the Goddess of Prophecy herself. Are you leaving, Fairy Nilu? I'm afraid so. There are still other people who need my help. I won't go far, though, and I'll come back to visit the minute I have time to spare. So be a good girl, Putty Sara. And help out Grandpa Alma whenever you can, all right? Mm-hmm. Got it. Patty Sara will wait here for you. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl, Patty Sara. Ah, I almost forgot. If Constellation Metropole is where you're heading, you'll need to take the Maritime Express. I'll head to the station first thing tomorrow morning and wake up that lazy station master for you. Uh, why don't you take a break? for the rest of the day. You should savor the beautiful scenery of the forest before you go. Sounds great! Paimon definitely feels tired after being on the go for so long. There's a spot in the tavern with Paimon's name on it. Oh, sounds like someone's ready to order. Oh, well, if you're offering. Paimon will take a glass of Buell fruit tonic. Um, but hold the tonic. <laughs> Get up, said Jewel. Uh, time to get to work, you lazy bones. Oh, oh, oh I can't, uh, can't remember how to call the train. Just let me sleep a little longer, and I'm sure I'll remember. Don't try to pull one over on me, young man. Your fading disorder has been cured. I saw you chugging cup after cup of magic tonic in the tavern last night. Uh. You must be mistaken, Grandpa Alman. That guy definitely wasn't me. Oh, you remember my name now, do you? Then it seems like you're all better. You had no idea who I was when you were fading. Now, enough of your nonsense. Get up. The fairy and her friends are going to be here any second. All right. I'm up. I'm up. The Maritime Express should be here soon. That's more like it. Ah, lie there any longer and you'll start gathering dust. Uh, is everything okay? 
the hero, his pixie companion, and the forest fairy. Oh, I, I didn't know you were already here. <laughs> Merciful macadamias. I I'm sorry you had to see that. Oh, it's all right. Paimon knows the feeling. Who doesn't want to sleep in first thing in the morning? Does the Maritime Express run out of Constellation Metropole? Uh, yes. E each train needs a conductor to operate, and the conductors are always from the capital. The more difficult maneuvers are a little too complicated when you're made of paper. Oh! So you mean the people of Constellation Metropole aren't origami animals like you? Well, the, the city welcomes visitors from all over the world, so you're bound to run into some forest dwellers there. But yes, generally speaking, the residents of Constellation Metropole look quite different from us. Ah, you'll see for yourself soon enough. Here comes the train. Pleasure to meet you, everyone. My name is Will, and I'll be the conductor for your journey today. I'm assuming you're the one to call the train. Whoa, it's a little toy man! Yes, we, we call the train. The hero and the forest fairy need a ride to Constellation Metropole. The, the hero and the forest fairy? The ones from the prophecy? Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have prepared a far more luxurious train. I'll just go back and get a better one. That's okay, Mr. Wheel. We're trying to get to the city as fast as possible. We just need you to get us across the sea. In your capable hands, I'm sure we'll get there in no time. Uh, of course, my lady. It would be an honor. Well then, all aboard, sit anywhere you like. We'll get a stunning view of Simulanka no matter where you're seated. <sighs> oh, breakfast. <sighs> hmm? Did one of you just say something? Wasn't me either. Uh, breakfast. Um, oh, come back. Hmm. Sounds like the voice is coming from inside the train. <sighs> Fish. Chicken drumsticks. Oh, gotcha. What the... What's Kirara doing here? Is she a friend of yours? Oh, let Paimon introduce you. This is Kirara. She's... Oh, wait. Actually, maybe we should wake her up first. So noisy. I, I, is it morning already? Oh, morning. Huh? Huh? Traveler! Paimon! I, I, it's you? Which means... Oh, thank goodness. It was all a dream after all. <laughs> oh, gotta hand it to my imagination. It all felt super real. There were these toy people, but they were alive and they could talk. <clears throat> Madam, sleeping overnight in the train car is prohibited. Uh -huh. it, it wasn't just a dream? It's all right, Kiwara. Apparently we're in a world called Simulanka. We got here yesterday, too. Simulanka? So, that's what it's called. I spent all day yesterday wandering around this one city. Uh, the toy people called it Constellation Metropole. I was trying to find a way to get back home. <sighs> I was seriously starting to think I'd gotten on the bad side of some great yokai and gotten swallowed whole. Huh. I take it you're Hina Zuman then, Miss Kirara? She sure is. But, uh, Kirara here is kind of special. Let Paimon introduce you for real this time. Kirara is a Nekomata from Inazuma. She works as a courier for Komania Express. 
Huh, nice to meet you. I'm Nilu, a member of Zubair Theater. You can usually find us performing in Sumeru City's Grand Bazaar. Right now, though, I suppose I should introduce myself as the Fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Oh, you're Nilu! I've heard a lot about you from my deliveries in Sumeru. I even saw one of your performances back in the day. You're an amazing dancer. But, uh, did you say you were a... forest fairy? Oh, yeah, that's her new identity here in Simulanka. Oh, speaking of new identities, looks like you got a new outfit yourself, Kirara! Yeah, I know! It confused the heck out of me yesterday. I just woke up in a set of brand new clothes I'd never seen before. That must mean you have a big part to play here, too! I think Miss Lynette would be better suited to that role, being a magician and all. Did you by any chance hear a voice speaking to you before you got here, Miss Kirara? A voice... Oh, yeah, I did hear something! But I was so freaked out my tails got all tangled, so I, uh, didn't catch much of what was said. <laughs> s s sorry for the interruption, but this uh, Nekomata friend of yours, she doesn't eat hamsters, does she? Or frogs? Oh, no need to worry, little guys. I would never do something like that. Well, unless I'd been out in the wild too long without anything to eat. Oh, speaking of eating, I am getting a little hungry. <clears throat> Where are your manners, everyone? Uh, this young lady is a trusted friend of our esteemed hero. Now, I know a fear of felines is etched into us with ink, but I'm certain Miss Nekomata in boots here means us no harm. It sure looks like you're keeping your distance, though, Grandpa Almond. You will have nothing to fear, I promise. I met some origami animals in Constellation Metropole yesterday, and I even made sure to retract my claws so I didn't hurt them by accident. Plus, you all look just about as tasty as the cardboard boxes I deliver. <laughs> uh, not that I'd try to eat you even if you did look tasty. Uh, promise. Please excuse us, Mom. Uh, it's just an unconscious reaction. <clears throat> Dear passengers, it's almost time for us to depart. Oh, yeah, that. Whoops. This turned into a pretty long conversation, didn't it? All right, let's get on the train. You coming with us, Kirara? Mm-hmm. I'll ride with you to the next stop. There's a place near the Metropole that caught my eye yesterday, so I want to go explore it today. Then all that remains for me to say is... On behalf of the Forest of Blessings, thank you once again for all you've done for us. May the Goddess of Fate be with you and bless your journey, Madam Fairy, Miss Nekomata in Boots, and our brave heroes. Please do visit us in the Forest of Blessings again, once peace has returned to this land. We will. We'll definitely meet again. Take care, Grandpa Almond. Here we are! Constellation Metropole is right over there. It's a short walk from here to the Gear Sky Ladder, which will take you right to Metropole Square. And thank you again for choosing Maritime Express. Great! And thanks to you for a smooth and pleasant journey, Mr. Wheel. The train cars were comfortable and spacious, and I had a great night's sleep. I'll definitely be back. Um, as you wish, ma'am. Where should we go next? Is that place you wanted to check out nearby? Mm-hmm. I took a walk around yesterday, and it felt like there was something weird about it. So, I think I'll indulge my curiosity and go investigate. Want us to come with you? It's okay. You guys go ahead and visit the Metropole for now. Hopefully, that's where you'll be able to find out some more about this world. I 
pretty much explored the whole place from the rooftops yesterday, but for some reason, this is the place that caught my attention. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like, when you get a stone stuck in your claw or something, it keeps nagging at you to dig it out, but you can't focus on anything else until you do. Don't worry, if you run into any trouble, I'll be there faster than you can say Gold Level Courier of the Comania Express. Okay, fair enough. We'll head to the Metropole then. Guess this is where we say bye for now. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about me. Let's not forget, I'm a yokai. Help me! Help! Oh, oh, goddess of prophecy above, would you kind souls please help us? What happened here? Why are you all suspended in midair? I mean, being stuck in midair still beats falling to the ground and being smashed into a pile of blocks, but... I told him to be careful, but... No. Never mind. Now's not the time for that. My good friends, could I trouble you to turn the clockwork key over there? I'll explain everything in a bit. Oh. oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, what happened there? It almost seemed like we turned back time. I take it this is your first time witnessing the power of the Goddess of Prophecy, then? If so, I can see why you might think that. Basically, this is a gift bestowed upon Constellation Metropole by the Goddess of Prophecy, who rules over the natural course of all things. It helps those who have deviated from their proper path to get back on track. Proper path? Do you mean everything that happens in the Metropole has been planned out since the very beginning? Why are you saying that as if it's a bad thing? You're not explaining it clearly. Here, allow me. Of course, all the residents of the Metropole have the freedom to live their own lives. For instance, whether I use olive oil or sesame oil in my morning skincare routine is entirely my choice. But whenever something disastrous is about to happen, like when I almost got turned into a pile of rubble just now, the goddess's magic will activate in the world around us. So, in other words, it's kind of protection magic to keep people alive? You could say that. There are other situations in which it activates too, but that's basically correct. Well, in any case, we're glad no one's hurt. Are you heading to the Constellation Metropole? Yep. Do you know where we can find the Gear Sky Ladder? Oh, it's just that platform up ahead. The one with the key sticking out. Uh, that thing? Um, are you sure? Yep, that's the one. Pretty much everything in the Metropole runs on tracks and gears. The Goddess of Prophecy watches over it all. Which is to say, all the tracks are fixed. If a machine is set up to move forwards, it'll never move in reverse. This reminds Paimon a lot of Fontaine's clockwork toys. You mean, like those music boxes with dancing figures? I think I've seen one or two from the merchants in Sumeru. Yeah, exactly like that. Anyway, sounds like it's not gonna suddenly fall out of the sky, so Paimon's okay now. Should we get going? Oh, what a bustling city! This place is fit for a king! Our next step is to get to the top of the Metropole and ask the Goddess of Prophecy for guidance. If there is a king in that castle, I sure hope he won't get mad at us for trespassing. into his castle. <laughs> Paimon hopes he's not mad. Silence! The one who shall soon stand before you is the ruler of Constellation Metropole. The one who descended after a meteor shower and the protector of order and all the stars in the sky. That's a long list of titles. 
I bid ye welcome guests from afar. Long have I heard of your grand deeds. O oh, fairy, who restored the lifeblood of the forest. O oh, hero, who... Uh, uh, huh? Nadia! Hold your foul tongue! How dare you utter Her Majesty's name! <laughs> nice one, partner. Spectacular improvisation skills. I'd expect no less from you. All right, all right. You can relax now. Allow me to make some introductions. This is a traveler and his trusty companion, Paimon. You are personal friends with Her Majesty the King? Please, forgive our grievous mistake. We had no idea. <clears throat> all right. The welcome ceremony is over. Everyone back to your stations. I will personally treat our guests to some royal hospitality. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, come on. I've already sent them off. So, anyway, how did you guys get here? We were gonna ask you the same thing! Also, how are you already king of this nation? And where did you get a crown? Oh, wait, don't say it. You just woke up like this, right? Sounds like you've answered your own question. But before I woke up, I heard a voice say to me, You are the king of Constellation Metropole. Now go forth and save your city. A similar thing happened to me. Oh, yeah, sorry. You must be the fairy of the Forest of Blessings, right? Mm -hmm. This is Nilu, a friend that we made during our time in Sumeru. Nice to meet you, Miss Nilu. I'm Navia, the president of Spina di Rosula. If you ever get the chance to go to Fontaine, make sure you come and visit me. I'm based in Poisson. Seems like you're taking this all in stride. Aren't you nervous about getting stuck here and never being able to get back home? Why would I be worried about that? We've faced much bigger problems than this before, and we always pull through. This should be a piece of cake. Besides, life's always full of surprises. You gotta learn to just enjoy it. That sounds like a great outlook on life. You have a very optimistic spirit. Thanks, I'll take that. Honestly though, it also puts me at ease to find out that you guys are the fairy and heroes that I've been hearing about in this prophecy. <laughs> We're kind of veterans at dealing with prophecies by now, aren't we? Uh, about that. Has anything bad happened in the Metropole? We heard about an evil dragon. Did it make a mess here too? It sure did. Apparently, for whatever reason, he went for the stars above the city recently. Literally just flew up and started snatching them out of the sky. Luckily, the guards responded quickly and stopped the dragon from taking them back to his lair. Unfortunately, though, he dropped them before he flew off. Now they're scattered all around the Metropole. I've been out trying to retrieve them, but I only managed to get one of them before you showed up. Oh, I didn't ask yet. What brings you to the Metropole anyway? Oh, Paimon can explain! Huh, I see. So, you want to consult the Oracle of the Goddess of Prophecy. Do you know how we can do that, Miss Navia? Well, the Goddess's statue is indeed at the top of the castle. I can take you up there. However, I've heard from the citizens here that the Goddess hasn't given out any new revelations in a very long time. Really? But Grandpa Almond told us that he received his prophecy from the goddess. Oh, that's probably because the prophecy about the hero of Simulanka has been around for a very long time. But recently, people realized that the goddess didn't reveal anything about what's supposed to happen after peace has been restored. Huh. Okay. Still, can't hurt to try your luck. And maybe you can help me get rid of the invaders while we're at it. Invaders? So the dragon's not your only problem? Right. The forest isn't the only place where strange things have been happening to the residents. 
Have you come across the gift from the Goddess of Prophecy yet? You mean... the protection magic that stops them from coming to harm? We saw it in action. Yep, that's the one. Over the past little while, this magic has been triggering far more frequently. We don't know if it's simply because the Metropole has grown a lot more dangerous, or if there's a deeper reason behind it. Some residents find themselves getting stuck in a place and unable to move. Others start repeating the same thing over and over again, like they're trapped in some kind of loop. If we were to use clockwork toys as an analogy, could it be that the tracks have eroded or the gears have slid out of place? That's exactly right, Nilu. That's basically what's happening. Anyway, some of the monsters outside the city saw this as an opportunity to launch an invasion. Uh, but we didn't see a single monster on our way here. That's because I already took care of most of them over the past couple of days. Of the remaining few, we trapped some of them inside the castle and chased the rest back out of the city. Okay, so to summarize, not only has the magic here gotten all messed up, but the dragons also knocked some of the stars out of the sky, plus there's a bunch of monsters in the city! <sighs> Sounds like there's a lot more to fix here than in the Forest of Blessings. Well, defeating the dragon and the monsters should be straightforward enough. But how do we fix the magic? Supposedly, the goddess has had it all planned out for ages. One of her oldest prophecies says this. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. Huh? But weren't the tracks the gift that she gave to her people in the first place? Does that mean she plans to take the gift back? That's what the prophecy seems to be saying, yes. So, as a result, some people are against turning the gear, despite what the prophecy says, since they fear a future where they no longer enjoy the goddess's protection. But letting this drag on isn't the answer either, is it? No, and I think they know that. But they're just too afraid to take that final, terrifying step. They're still hoping there might be an alternative solution. Now, we could ignore their objections and go turn the gear ourselves. But... Exactly. You know me well. And that's why you're my partner. I want to get as many people on my side as possible. At the end of the day, this is their city. And they should have the right to decide its future. Ooh, spoken like a true wise king, Navia. I am the boss of Spina di Rosula, after all. This may be my first time as a king, but there are a few similarities between the two roles. Traveler, Paimon, Miss Nilu, would you be willing to lend me your support? With your help, I'm confident we'll be able to find the most frictionless way to resolve the problems plaguing this city. Ah, uh, thanks, partner. Seriously, like we'd ever say no? We're your friends! No need to ask us so formally in the future. I'm happy to help, too. This is a beautiful city. And just like the Forest of Blessings, I would love to see it return to normal as soon as possible. Ah, great. As the King of Constellation Metropole, I extend to you my gratitude. All right, everyone, follow me. I'll show you the way to the Goddess Statue at the top of the Metropole. And stay close. You don't want to get lost in my castle. It's huge. Huh? What's this? Wait. This looks like the star I found earlier. I told the guards to place it near the goddess statue. Maybe they ran into some trouble up there. Guess we'd better hurry. Uh, I can't move. What happened? Your Majesty, this conservative radical, he attacked us. He threw the star from the Astral Garden and even stole the magic thread linking the Oracle Pillars. But just as we were about to arrest him, the Goddess's magic activated, 
And now we can't move. No! Nobody touched the celestial gear! What's an oracle pillar? You need to use it to pray to the goddess. I'll explain later. First, let's help these guys. Hey, he's getting away! Halt! It's okay. Let him go. But, your majesty... Even if we catch up to him now, we won't be able to change his mind, much less quell the fear that many others like him are feeling. All it would do is turn him further against us. Understood, your majesty. Also, this is the magic thread he was holding from the oracle pillars. Your majesty, what should we... Ah, please give that to the traveler over there. I believe they have some questions for the goddess. Yes, your majesty. What do we do with this, exactly? See those oracle pillars over there? Just use the magic thread to connect them together in a specific pattern, and the goddess of prophecy will answer your prayers. Oh! Sounds easy enough. Let's give it a try! It worked! To which course of fate do you seek answers, my child of Simulanka? Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So, Miss Navia was right. The Goddess of Prophecy didn't tell us anything about the future. Fair enough. Guess we'll just have to play it by ear. Then first, we have to restore the sky back to its original state, by putting the stars back in their positions. Let me do a quick count. All right. Adding in the ones we picked up on the way here, I think that's all of them. Let's go hang these stars back up in the sky. In the... sky? Uh, how do we get up there? Oh, <laughs> I got us covered. We will, of course, be taking... The Aerial Express. Is that a flying train? Hey, you already took a train that runs on water. Is a flying train really that much weirder? Well, at least the Maritime Express still runs on a track. Oh, come on. Don't worry about it. This train has been blessed by the Goddess of Prophecy. Its whole purpose is to protect the Metropole skies. It took me a lot of effort to find it, you know. I don't think anyone's used it in, like, mm, a hundred years. A hundred years? Are you sure it's safe? Let's not forget that the Goddess of Prophecy's magic has been going haywire recently. Well, it's not like we have any other options. Unless you want to do the honors, Paimon. Fancy flying up there on your own? <laughs> no, thank you. It's way too high up. Oh, wait, Milu! You've got a feel for how magic works here. Can you do your thing and sense if this train is the real deal? I can try. Hmm. Yes, I can sense traces of magic, but it's different from the kind I felt in the forest, so... I don't know. Okay, fine. Guess there's only one way to find out. That's the spirit. I'll come with you. Miss Nilu, will you be joining us? I think I'll stay behind. That way, if something does go wrong, you'll have someone on the ground to get you some help. That makes sense. If the train does break down, you can make us a giant origami crane to come bail us out. Or if a crane's too difficult, a finch could work. <laughs> What an 
an amazing feeling. I've never been on a flying train before. Neither have we. That should do it. On to the next location. smoothly yeah and it was an absolute blast too you gotta ride with us next time miss nilu huh uh, i'm okay uh, thanks for halt what do you think you're doing get out of my way what's going on your majesty there let us through! Stay back! It's okay. Let them through. Your Majesty, could we please ask you not to turn the gear that connects up to the sky? And why is that? As you have seen, the goddess's gift is very important to us. It keeps us from harm and protects our very lives. Some of us, we just aren't ready to lose that protection. I see. I understand. Huh? Your Majesty, do you mean... I won't turn that gear. Not until you're ready. What? I've said before that the Metropole belongs to the people. And they should have the right to decide its future. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How do you plan to solve the issues we are currently facing? Well, we'll start by rescuing the people that have gotten stuck. And then we'll find a way to figure out the true cause of this crisis. And have you made any headway on that? The true cause, I mean. Unfortunately not. Hey, you little... I'm sorry, my friend, but it's the truth. You have friends and family that have been affected, don't you? That have gotten stuck? Duh. I understand your concerns. But if we let this drag on for much longer, the situation may well get worse. More and more people will be frozen by the goddess's magic. Yes, but if we turn that gear now, all the tracks in this city will disappear. I know this is a hard decision to make, but have you ever thought about why the goddess might have made things this way in the first place? Huh? Why do you think she might decide to take back her gift and stop revealing further prophecies about the future? Are you saying she has abandoned us? No, quite the opposite, in fact. What do you mean? The goddess dearly loves this world and all the people of Simulanka. And because she loves you so much, she wants you to be able to choose your own path. <sighs> Every parent hopes their child will have a happy and carefree life. But if they're overprotective, then all they'll manage to do is keep their child trapped. If a mother bird lets her baby ride on her wings for too long, her child will never learn how to fly. Perhaps the goddess of prophecy has always known that one day, she'll have to let go. 
children can only become independent if they're allowed to form their own opinions, make their own decisions, and deal with the consequences on their own. Only then will they be able to continue their journey alone, even after their parents are gone. But we've relied on the goddess's protection for so long, we don't know what it's like to go it alone. We don't know if we have what it takes. Are you kidding me? I think you've proven yourselves more than capable of that. What do you mean? You made a call in a time of crisis, and you've come all this way to talk to me. Even the guards couldn't stop you. That must have taken a lot of courage. But we only did it because we were scared. Why you set out on the journey doesn't matter. What matters is that you've proven you can choose your own path. <sighs> My friend, I fear our king is right. It is time for us to face our fears. What? But, but we... We can't go on living like this. Living in fear. Look at what it's driven you to do. You threw away a star personally created by the goddess of prophecy herself. <laughs> you once revered her more than any of us. And I think the king is right. She hasn't abandoned us. So, why don't we put our trust in her one more time? <laughs> I don't care anymore. Do what you want. Aw, he laughed. I'm sorry about my friend. That's just how he is. Always had a terrible temper. Please accept my apology for his impudent behavior. Is it just me, or... Has he accepted the goddess's prophecy? I think so. Not that you'll ever hear him admit it out loud. Your Majesty... Please turn the gear that connects up to the sky. So, you've made up your mind? About giving up the goddess's gift? Yes, I've made up my mind. But maybe losing the gift isn't what this is about anymore. Because we've gained something, too. You have given us courage. <laughs> well said. I am proud of your decision. Now, Gather around, everyone, and join me as we make the night sky of this wonderful city turn once more. So the stars hanging in the sky, they're music notes! This entire metropole is a huge music box! That's incredible! <sighs> How do you feel? Uh, a little scared and uncertain. But for some reason, I feel a lot more at ease. It's as if some kind of huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Figured out any next steps? To be honest, not really. But maybe I can start by having a heart-to-heart -heart with that stubborn friend of mine. I have an idea. If you don't know what to do, why don't you start by helping the people around you? You mean the people who got stuck because of the goddess's magic? I mean anyone and everyone who needs your help. By helping others? You'll eventually find your own path. Trust me. I have experience in this. What kind of experience, Your Majesty? Hmm... Ah, uh, yes. We'll need a formal organization with a catchy name before we go out and start helping people. Why don't we call it... The Spina di Rosula? Spina... di Rosula? Ooh, or even... The Spina di Rosula... Simulanka. Yeah, that's catchy. 
Wow, big expansion for the Spina. Moving into other worlds now. Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I like it. It's a great name. Let's do as your majesty suggests. Well then, how about I appoint you as the head of the Spina in Simulanka? While I'm off fighting the dragon with the other heroes, it'll be your responsibility to work with the guards and take good care of the people in the Metropole. What? You're planning on fighting the dragon? But no, your majesty, you must reconsider. He's right. Your majesty, you can't. How are you two on the same side all of a sudden? Perhaps your majesty is unaware of this. The great dragon suddenly broke out from the titanium mines one day and tore the end of the world to pieces. After that, it spat out a strange fog that surrounded a whole island. No one knows what lies beyond the fog, and no one knows what has become of that poor island. Before your majesty arrived, we dispatched many soldiers to fight the dragon, but none came back alive. Yikes. Sounds worse than we thought. Isn't that all the more reason for us to go? There could still be guards trapped there, waiting for someone to rescue them. King Navia is right. We cannot simply stand by and watch as the people of this world suffer. <sighs> very well. Though I have not served by your side for very long, Your Majesty, two days is enough for me to have learned that once your mind is set, any attempts to change it are futile. <laughs> You're a pretty good judge of character. Um... He probably didn't mean that as a compliment. Since you're serious about this, I won't try and stop you. There's only one way to reach the end of the world, and that's by taking the Maritime Express. Oh, right. So there's a line going there too? Yes. It was originally built to serve the workers commuting to the Titanium Mines, but it has been abandoned since the Dragon Attack. I'll tell the conductor to wait for you at the platform by the side gate to the Metropole first thing tomorrow morning. You're embarking on an extremely dangerous adventure. Please be careful, your majesty and friends. Oh, thank you for your concern. While I'm gone, I leave the Metropole in your capable hands. Yes, yes your, your majesty. majesty. <laughs> Just call me boss from now on. That's what everyone in the Spina calls me, and it's what I'm used to. The plan for tomorrow is journey across the ocean, make it to the end of the world, and defeat a dragon. Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? At least we'll get to see some amazing scenery along the way, right? Besides, we'll have each other. It'll be a shared experience that we'll never forget. Plus, we're pretty well equipped for a classic Heroes vs. Dragon story. We got Miss Nilu as our magic caster, and I... I guess I'm the melee warrior who leads the charge? Paimon can definitely see that. Anyway, those are tomorrow's problems. Right now, all Paimon wants is to eat a proper meal, because worst case scenario, if Paimon ends up getting eaten by a dragon, she wants to do it on a full stomach. And something about the end of the world doesn't sound like a great place for food options. Hmm. Well, the origami animals in the forest only drink magic tonic. What do the toy people here in Constellation Metropole eat? Vegetable oil and sawdust, I think. Carriage inspection, check. Wheel and axle inspection, check. Power inspection. Good morning, Mr. Wheel. Oh, good morning, heroes of Simulanka. Hey, our old friend Wheel is the driver again. <sighs> that already puts Paimon at ease. Are you certain you don't want us to accompany you, Your Majesty? I am. You can leave the dragon slang to us. My partner's a pro. He does it all the time. What remarkable friends Her Majesty has. With such great heroes by your side, I'm sure you'll best the dragon with ease. We won't keep you any longer. 
All right, then. Look after the city for me while I'm gone. Yes, Your Majesty. Just leave it to us. I think we're all set. Time to depart. <laughs> Next stop, the end of the world! All change? Please, all change. So we've got to switch trains, right? Huh? What's that? It looks like... Hilly Churls, they've taken over that platform! Huh? What do we do? Just find somewhere to hide, Mr. Wheel. We'll take care of them. Whew. That's all of them. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Now, let me take a look at the train. Hmm. The carriage is a little scratched up, but there doesn't seem to be any real damage. And the engine's still operating normally, so I think we're good to go. Wonderful. Let's keep going, then. Go forth and witness this world, my... Make sure to be nice to everyone. I leave it to you. Are you okay, Miss Nilu? I'm fine, but I think the Traveler is still unconscious. We're lucky this guy caught us on the way down. <laughs> Passed out from a little fall, did ya? How fragile. Aw, oh, cut him some slack. The Traveler's had a rough few days. We should just let him nap for a bit. Uh, but my... my leg's falling asleep. You couldn't have set him down on the grass over there, Hakai? Ha! I go out of my way to save four people who fall out of the sky, and now you're nitpicking my choice of soft landing? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <clears throat> ah, he's awake! Morning, sunshine. You were having a nice little dream there, weren't you? Not gonna lie, it was kind of adorable. You and your friends fell from the top of that waterfall, and you passed out along the way. Guess someone couldn't keep it together. Sorry to break it to you, but crashing into the ground doesn't take you to another world. That kind of thing only happens in those stupid light novels they sell in Inazuma. Also, he kind of, uh, set you down in Nilu's lap, so that's where you've been napping all this time. No, it's all right. I, I'm i just glad you're okay. You didn't hit your head, did you? Is the dizziness gone? Really? What did they say? The fog you see around here can have a hallucinatory effect. Apparently, it's the work of that dragon. Maybe you inhaled some while you were freaking out on your way down. A uh, traveler, Nilu, do you know this hat guy person? Oh yeah, he's a student at the Academia. We met during the last Interdarshan Championship. He was representing the Vahumana Darshan. Well then, hello there, friend. I'm Navia, the president of Spina di Rosula. It's very nice to meet you. 
So, should I just call you Hat Guy as well? Seems like that's what everyone's calling you. Sure. Whatever. Wait, Hat Guy. What's that sword around your waist? <sighs> An unwelcome encumbrance, that's what. I've had it ever since I woke up here. Tried to toss it, but no matter what I do, it always reappears. Such a pain. Anyway, if any of you want the hero sword, you can have it. Wait, it's called what? The hero sword. Meant to be wielded by the hero. I know. Me of all people, right? The irony. What? You're the hero of this world? Will you calm down? It's just a dumb title. Oh, uh, it's just that this entire time, we thought we were the heroes of the prophecy. <sighs> well, if it means that much to you, you're welcome to claim the title. You'd be doing me a favor. That's not the point! The real question is, if you're the hero, then where the heck have you been all this time? Looking for a way out. I heard there's a boat in this area that can bring you to another world. So I came to investigate. But look at the state of things around here. The lighthouse collapsed. The boat won't budge. <sighs> I say we try to find a different way out. Huh. Paimon's guessing a voice told you what you were supposed to do here. That's what happened with Navia and Nilu, at least. <laughs> you expect me to take orders from some disembodied voice? Hey, wait! Where are you going? To find the so-called source of this world's misfortune. The dragon responsible for this whole mess. Wait, we came here to fight the dragon as well. Why don't we go together? <sighs> Grab that dragon scale over there before you leave. It'll come in handy later. Uh, a dragon scale? Where? How did you know about it? What's it for? And... Have you ever considered keeping your questions to yourself? Because if you actually expect me to answer them all, we'll be here until the next Interdarshan Championship. You little... Doot. Paimon thought you might have learned some manners by now, but clearly not! into something hard, almost like a toy block. It doesn't seem to work on us, though. It spews out poison and transmutes everything it touches. Huh. No wonder they call it the evil dragon. Your Majesty! Madam Fairy Brave Hero! <sighs> what are you looking at me for? He's obviously talking to you. Mr. Wheel! You didn't get hurt when we fell, did you? Oh, not at all. Thankfully, the young man in the hat was kind enough to lend me a hand. <sighs> there seems to be a village over here. Some of the residents used to work in the Titania mines, and some came to fight the dragon, then got stuck here. I see. I'm glad they're all safe and sound. I can try to use my magic to fold a boat to bring everyone back. Oh, I'll help too. Still, I think we need to take care of the dragon first. We don't want it to start causing trouble when we're trying to load people onto the ship. Apparently, the villagers often see the dragon fly into a space behind the waterfall. Uh, they think that's the location of its lair. Then we should look around and try to find a way in. I'll wait here for your triumphant return. Your Majesty, brave heroes, please be careful. Waterfall, there's no way we're getting through. Quick, take out the dragon scale. Wait, but 
No. <laughs> Paimon doesn't need to ask you anything. Um, the dragon scale can turn anything it touches into toy blocks, so... Oh, aha! You want to use it to block off the water! See? Paimon can figure things out all on her own. It's just... I sensed a very powerful magical signature just now. Huh. Guess this is the dragon's lair after all. Huh? When did you put your hat on? Well, we're getting ready to fight, aren't we? I feel more comfortable in my regular outfit. Hat Guy also put away that sword around his waist. Oh, should have never had to use this thing to begin with. Do... do you need to do anything to prepare, Traveler? Paimon's getting kind of nervous seeing everyone all serious like this. Huh. This space is completely empty. Paimon bets this is where the dragon sleeps. Watch out in front! It's coming! <laughs> Look, he's here. Ah, another new soul has joined this world. But are you sure his fate will be as you described? Of course. My predictions are never wrong. I just don't like that kind of story. Then you need only do as you said, and let him find his own story within your fairy tale. <laughs> You're right. Then listen closely, my child. Your name is... <laughs> It's... it's the dragon! The dragon that destroyed the Titanium Mines! Help! Help! Soldiers, pick up your weapons! Destroy that monster! How many times am I going to have to save you? Thank you, Hat Guy. Uh, Paimon still feels dizzy. Um, hey, did any of you also see something strange? It was like we were witnessing... The dragon's memories. Sounds like we all saw the same thing just now. Well, we definitely saw a different side to the story. Watching it all unfold, Paimon couldn't help but feel bad for the dragon. This world might be a lot more complicated than we thought. The next time we encounter the dragon, 
How about we try talking to him instead of fighting? That sounds like a good plan. But maybe we should figure out where we ended up first? Huh. If the world above is a fairy tale realm, then maybe we've fallen into the next page of the book. Uh, just keep walking and don't fall behind. Hey, wait for us! Our home! It was destroyed by that evil dragon! The, the stars! It flew away with the Metropole stars! Oh, no! We... We didn't get eaten by the dragon? The dragon just dropped us off here? Hat guy! You're getting too far away! <sighs> He's just up ahead. Is he trying to lure us somewhere? Well, I'd say we were the ones who backed him into a corner. But we just want to ask him a few questions about his past. He's had year after year of people coming here to try to take his head. If you ask me, his reaction is perfectly normal. Maybe there's still something we can do to calm him down? I wouldn't count on it. Maybe his earlier attacks were just a warning. But now, he's actually getting serious. Prepare for a final battle. Sometimes, it takes a little force for someone to finally wake up. Wait! Inside the black mist? Oh, I see something up ahead. Are you sure you want to create this child, Em? Even after what I told you about his fate? <sighs> he will be abandoned by his creator. And eventually... I know, B. You've told me already. That sad story with the disappointing ending. It's what happened in the real world, isn't it? But that's exactly why I want to change things. In a different world, his story can have a happier ending. That child... His heart is so full of love. I understand, Anya, but know that if you give him that name, his fate in Simulanka is destined to parallel that of his real-world namesake. But there's still a chance, right? Maybe it's a shot in the dark, but I have to try. He deserves a better life, although... He might need the help of others when the time comes. All right, my dear. The choice is yours. Since you're so persistent, let me tell you a secret. <sighs> More boring fate talk. I'm sorry, my child. Unlike my friends, I don't have a long time to live. All said and done, the story of my life will be shorter than the fairy tales in this book. So I will have to leave your side, I'm afraid. <laughs> Mm. 
It's okay. It's okay. Once I'm gone, I will become a star in Simulanka and watch over you from above. If you ever feel lonely, just look up towards the sky. <sighs> Go forth and witness this world, my child. Make sure to be nice to everyone. You'll meet good friends one day. I'm sure of it. That is my wish for your future. As for this world, I leave it to you. <laughs> So in the end, you're betrayed too. Hey, Mr. Dragon. He brought you some food. You must be hungry. <laughs> You're a bad dragon, but you're always nice to me when we play together. You always help me pick flowers way up high that I can't reach. It's okay. Just keep hiding here, and tomorrow I'll... Oh no, my child! Help! Somebody help me! Save my child! The dragon's trying to kidnap her! Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> so you're hated by people too. So that's it. That's really your wish? To never have been born at all? That's not a fate you should wish for. Nobody can define who you are. Or deny the true feelings of your heart. Now remember your name. Durin. It's all right now. It's a close call. Are you guys all right? Back in Constellation Metropole, I heard people saying you'd gone to fight the dragon, so I followed you here. Right when I managed to catch up, I saw you fall through that hole. Wait, didn't someone else fall through just now? Shouldn't we do something? Oh yeah, that guy. Well, he can fly, so he'll probably be fine. He called the dragon something earlier. It sounded like he said... 
Durin. That's his name. Oh, Hatkai, you're okay. Wait, what about the dragon... Durin? He's fine. Durin. Oh, wait, that's the name of the dragon from Dragon's Fine, right? The one that became a part of the mountain after being slain by Dvalin? If Pylon remembers correctly, it was created by... Right! It was created by Rhyme Daughter! Hmm. Created, you say? Huh. So, what exactly happened down there? You've been acting weird ever since the end of the fight. <sighs> So that's the truth about Simulanka's evil dragon. What we saw in the mist weren't hallucinations, but the dragon's memories. Huh. I thought it was strange. The people around the Broken Sea are clearly stranded, but I never heard any stories about the dragon attacking the village. The people we met along the way are probably workers from the Titania Mines, or guards who came here to claim the dragon's head. Durin probably allowed them to live here because there was nowhere else for them to go. When I first came to this world, a voice spoke to me and said, You are the hero of this world. Now go forth and save the dragon. Huh. Who is the person behind this voice anyway? And why did they bring us all here? Come with me. The answer to all this can be found below. <laughs> Is this... a study? That's right. It belongs to the Goddess of Fate. Goddess of Fate? As in one of the three goddesses who created Simulanka? Or more precisely, M. One of the mages of the Hexen Zirkle. Hexen Zirkle? As in... Sorry, Paimon shouldn't just regurgitate everything you say, it's just... It's a lot to take in! She created the story of Durin. Well, the Simulanka version at least. These records should cover most of what you want to know. Including the identities of the other two goddesses. Read them for yourselves. By all rights, I should have been A, since A is the first and last letter of my name. But Alice overruled me on the basis of seniority and said I should be M instead because of my middle name. <laughs> she really knows how to push my buttons. Still, her magic never fails to amaze me. I still can't believe she got one of my origami frogs to start talking. Hmm. Why don't I write a story with origami animals as the main characters? Let's see. Once upon a time, in a magical forest, there lived a group of animals made of paper. Barbie loves looking into the future, so she used her powers to map out the fates of all living things in Simulanka. But knowing the ending in advance takes all the fun out of the story. I think I'll make a bet with her. I believe that one day, the people of Simulanka will decide to carve their own destiny. Oh, apparently, she wants to build a statue of herself in the capital city. <laughs> Always looking to add some pizzazz. My dear sisters, I fear my pen shall soon run dry. Even now, as I write this letter to you, my dexterity is all but failing me. Thank you for enjoying my stories and for creating this world for me. The time we spent together was the most wonderful youth I could have asked for. 
I always feel so young when we're together. A says that even after I'm gone, the goddess of fate in Simulanka will continue to exist and carry on granting people's wishes. It makes me glad. If you ever want to chat, feel free to pay a visit to the goddess statue. Just don't wish for anything weird. It's Simulonka Duran, and he's looking up at something. A star. This must have been after M passed away. This looks like a mine. Maybe the Titania miners dug too deep? So deep that they dug right through to the world on the next page. Yeah. Now that you mention it, this miner's lamp looks really similar to the star on the previous page. The Forest of Blessings. This book has been recording Simulanka's history all along. Look at the size of those footprints. If that's every time he lands, then no wonder people are so terrified of him. So that's why you took the stars. Because you missed your mom. looks different from the one in the Metropole. It's a different goddess. This one is the goddess of fate. <sighs> it's all right now, Durin. Nobody here wants to hurt you. <laughs> Don't say that, Durin! I Paimon made a mistake. She was wrong about you. But it's nice to talk, isn't it? Now that we've all calmed down? <laughs> So that's why you made that wish? <sighs> so stupid. Hey! Anyone with eyes can see that all you want to do is get along with everyone. <sighs> you just want to make friends, people to play with to talk to, people who accept you, or at least accept your apology. Oh, you've never hurt anyone. Heck, the idea never even crossed your mind. Sure, you scared a bunch of people half to death, but that's only because they had no idea what kind of dragon you really are. Yeah. If you had a heart-to-heart -heart with them, I'm sure they'd come to understand you and see your point of view. Is it your true wish to live side by side with the people of Simulanka? <laughs> then close your eyes and make a wish to the goddess of fate. We will help make your wish come true. <laughs> Thank you. 
Just trust me. <sighs> I, Nilu, the Forest Fairy, give to you my blessing and welcome you as a dweller of the forest. May everyone accept you as one of our own. And may the Forest of Blessings be a place you can call home. I, Navia, King of Constellation Metropole, give you my blessing. I grant you citizenship to my kingdom. Oh, me too! As the, uh, Nekomata in Boots of this world, I give you my blessing too. Wait, what's going on? <sighs> I, the hero of this world, give you my blessing. I recognize you as a resident of Simulanka. May you find acceptance in this world. Also, speaking as someone who'd like to be your friend, I wish you all the best for the future. I, a traveler who has traversed many worlds, give to you my blessing. May you find friendship and goodwill, no matter where you go. As for this world, I leave it to you. What? Why are you all staring at me? Huh? My... my claws... Are these my claws? And my wings... Oh, my tail... <gasps> Does this mean... <laughs> wow... You look so cute! Quite a radical transformation! Uh, not that there was anything wrong with the way you looked before, of course. <laughs> it's just... Uh... You get what I mean. How do you feel? Are you happy with your new appearance? Does anyone have a flower with them? Or even just some water or paper from this world? Oh, I do actually. Here you go. They're... they're not changing. I can touch things without changing them. Hey, that's great! One more flying friend for Paimon! Now the residents of Simulanka won't be scared of you anymore. Hmm. But what about all the things that I did before? That's simple. Just go out there and atone. You could fill in the footprints you left on the ground. Or help the people around the Broken Sea get home. Okay. And you'll come along and help me, right, Pat Guy? Huh? Why would I do that? Uh, because you said you wanted to be my friend. You little... Gah. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Huh? But I thought... <sighs> All right, fine. I'll go with you. Really? Yes, really. Lying to you would be no fun anyway. Oh, thank you! You're the first friend to call me by my name! <sighs> Let's go back up. I'm about to suffocate down here. Oh, it feels so good to finally see Hat Guy meet his match! <laughs> yeah, okay. Paima just never thought we'd see the day, that's all. All right. Let's also head back up then. Uh... Don't be scared, Durin. We'll be right by your side. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your blessings, everyone. Oh, this is the happiest day I've had in a really long time.
Ta-da! Surprise, everyone! Ah! Attacking Street Lamp! <laughs> street Lamp? Oh, my! You mean you still don't remember me after all the times we've spoken? I know that voice! It's Mom's friend! Hello there, traveler and friends. And Durin, it's good to see you. You've changed quite a lot. In fact, you look so different that perhaps I should call you Mini Durin. <laughs> Mini Durin, huh? Yeah, I like the sound of that. It's nice being smaller. You must be one of the three goddesses of this world. Are you the goddess of creation? <gasps> yep, that's right. But although it's the most impressive sounding of the three, to be honest, we all made an equal contribution toward the founding of this world. If you've ever read any of M's stories, you'll know just how enchanting the worlds are that she writes about. So enchanting that I just had to step inside and explore it for real. So I got B involved and with M's consent, created the world of Simulanka. Whoa, 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 you're getting a little ahead of yourself. First things first, would you mind explaining what you're doing here? In fact, no! What are we even doing here? <laughs> Don't worry, all will be revealed. After everything you accomplished on your journey, you're free to ask me anything you want. Hmm, let's start with your first question then. I'm here because I sensed a great magic power emanating from the book just now, and I couldn't resist the urge to peek inside and check it out. That must have been when we all gave Mini Durin our blessings, right? Yes, exactly. In the world of fairy tales, words and emotions often carry far more power than any spell. It's all thanks to your magic that Mini Durin was able to take this form. Come say hi to me, little one. Oh, look at you. You're as cute as a button. So, what about us? Was it always part of the plan that we'd come here? Oops. Plan isn't the word I'd use. If you ask me, I'd say fate works in mysterious ways. When Durin of Simulanka made his wish to the goddess of fate, it just so happened that in a world far away, all of you wonderful people were holding a copy of M's fairy tale at that exact moment. And because of your noble and kind souls, you were selected by the goddess of fate to come and save this world. Now that you mention it, that's what I was doing when I was transported here. I was reading a fairy tale to some children in the Fluvsandra. I think I just, uh, happened upon an old book and decided to use it as my pillow during a nap in a box. <laughs> wow, what a crazy coincidence. Wait, that's not right. How come everyone else got assigned to roll except us? Because we were also... It. We just received a strange book and we had no idea who sent it. Then, the moment we opened it up to start reading it, we found ourselves here. You're the one who sent it to us, aren't you? Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> yes, that does sound like me, doesn't it? Hmm, good question. Why indeed? Maybe I thought this was such a good story it simply had to be read by someone. As the traveler and witness of many worlds, how could I let such a beautiful place pass you by? I can sense that your blessing for Mini Durin was a very special one. With this blessing from beyond the story, he might even be able to explore worlds outside of this one. To that, you mean? That's right. In fact, back when we were first creating Simulanka, M told us that she hoped the people of this world would one day be able to explore the wider world beyond. Every story has an ending, but if the story becomes reality, it should have the right to choose its own path. So, in other words, the predestined lives these people lead were always going to disappear one way or another. Wait, so even if the people here get to go to other worlds, surely there's gotta be a way we can leave too, right? <laughs> Don't you realize you've been able to leave all along? Huh? 
You can either take the boat at the Broken Sea or touch the giant bookmark at the Cliff of Prophecy. All you need to do if you want to leave is focus on the place you want to go. How were we supposed to know that if you never told us? Huh, didn't I? <laughs> well, given how smart and capable you are, surely it can't have posed a huge problem for you. As for your other friends who were summoned here, if I had to guess, I'd say the Goddess of Fate probably didn't tell them about it because she wanted them to get engrossed in the story. She's Em's reflection, after all. It wouldn't surprise me if she shares Em's love for cliffhangers. Anyway, I think that answers your questions, yes? What do you all plan to do next? I... I'm gonna go say sorry to the people of this world. After that, I want to start protecting Simulanka, just like Mom told me to. Hmm. Now we know how easy it is to get back home, Paimon's suddenly not in such a hurry to leave. Same here. It's not every day that you get to come to such a magical world. I, for one, plan to explore it a little longer. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Maybe I should invite some other friends to join you, too. By the way, Mini Durin, I'm delighted to see you've made some new friends. I'm sure Em would be very proud of you. Now, before I depart, please let me give you a blessing as well. May your future be as rich and colorful as the stories Em used to tell. <sighs> She's gone. Guess this is where the hero's journey comes to an end, huh? Ah, but it's also where a new journey begins. The adventures of Minnie Durin and friends. Huh? An adventure for me? You bet. For starters, I'd love to introduce you to my other friends in the forest. Even though there have been some misunderstandings in the past, I'm sure they'll welcome the new you with open arms. Hmm? Huh? Ugh, stop looking at me. I already said I'll come with you. Whoa! Look over there! Wow. The stars are beautiful. Huh. I'll bet that's a gift to Minnie Durin from the three goddesses of this world. Oh. Thank you, Mom. Here's your two magic tonics. Why, thank you, young lady. And might I add that you're looking quite lovely today. Jean, come on, take a seat and let's have a drink. I ordered one for you as well. <sighs> but is this really appropriate? I mean... Still worried about Clee? <laughs> Relax. Albedo's with her. She'll be fine. Oh, look who it is. The Traveler and Paimon. You must be the pleasant surprise that Miss Alice told us about. Greetings to you both. This is one place I didn't expect to run into you two. The locals here have been talking non-stop about some brave heroes who saved the world. Let me guess. You two have been up to your old tricks. Well, not just us. We only played a small part. You could say we were two members of the Heroes Adventure Team. Still sounds mighty impressive to me. As ever, our honorary knight is making us proud wherever they roam. That's right. We received a letter of invitation from Miss Alice, proposing that we take Clee for a vacation in Fairyland when work dies down. I wasn't sure what she meant by Fairyland at first, but if my eyes are not deceiving me, she was being quite literal. We ran off excitedly as soon as we arrived. <sighs> I'm a little worried about her, but Albedo insisted he would look after her while we do our own thing. We could hardly say no to such a considerate offer, so I took it upon myself to bring Jean to the nearest tavern we could find. Any excuse for a drink, huh? <laughs> well, we are on vacation. It's only fair that we get to indulge ourselves a little. <laughs> You're right. I should make an effort to relax and unwind. It's what Miss Alice would want, after all. 
Oh, wait, Kaya. What exactly did you order from the bar? The house special, of course. Best way to get a taste of the local culture. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making that face, Paimon? Ah, uh, nothing. I was just perpetually amused by your lifestyle, that's all. Go on, drink up. Hmm. Something tells me I need to tread carefully here. Let's see, it's got a lovely color, but how about the taste? Maybe I'll pass, but it's such a shame to waste it. <laughs> All right, Paimon. Well played. Well, Paimon got burned too, if it's any consolation. It's nothing personal. Oh, by the way, we weren't the only ones who got invited here. I saw Kale earlier. She didn't see me, though. She was making a beeline for that big tree. The Kingdom of Breezes and Bells, you mean? Oh, this is turning into a huge reunion! Maybe we should go say hi to her! All right. Well, give her my regards. Thank you. Enjoy your time here, too. The structure of the tree houses here is nothing short of amazing. I have to write it down so I can tell Master Tainari all about it later. Hey, Kale! Uh, oh, you scared me. Traveler and Paimon, you got invited here too? Yep. Well, they sort of skipped the invitation part, but anyway, what you doing out here? Something caught your eye? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to observe and summarize the structures of the trees here. And also the animals that live here. Uh, well, the residents, I guess? I still can't get over the fact that they're all someone's origami handiwork. Once a forest ranger, always a forest ranger, huh? Not sure you'll be able to apply much of what you learn here back home, though. With this being a magical world and everything... What? Over there, by the giant footprint, have those houses always been there? Oh, those? The local flying squirrels told me that they were built by a small dragon and some guy wearing a hat. Oh, that must have been Mini Durin and Hat Guy. Uh, any idea where they went? Supposedly, after building the houses, they went to somewhere called, uh... Constellation Metropole? Did I say that right? Yep, you got it! Oh, also, when the locals mentioned the dragon, did they seem at all... Uh... Did they say how they felt about him at all? Hmm... Now that you mention it, the atmosphere changed a little when they talked about him. Oh no... They mentioned some stuff along the lines of... past misunderstandings and welcoming new members. I only just got here, so... I know very little about what has happened in the past. They seemed genuinely grateful for the houses, though. And said they were going to plan a welcome party. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. Sounds like the forest has begun to accept him. It's a step in the right direction. Are you looking for that small dragon? Yeah, he's a new friend we made after we arrived here. No way! Really? I'm getting more and more interested in your story. Uh, no, no, no. I've got to save her for next time. For now, I've got to make the most out of my time in this wonderful world. Oh, there's no rush. Just take it slow and enjoy yourself. Like Kaya. Oh, he says his regards, by the way. Oh, Mr. Kaya is here too? Then I've got to go say hi to him. Well, right now he's at the tavern and he probably won't be leaving until he's drunk. Not that he'll ever reach that point because his alcohol tolerance is so high. Basically, it's Kaya. You know where to find him. <laughs> you make a good point, Paimon. Then I'll focus on exploring for now, and go catch up with him later. Shall we go pay a visit to the Metropole Traveler? Maybe Minnie Durin and Hat Guy are still there! Oh, right. By the way, something pretty interesting has been happening in Sumero recently. 
Master Trimari has been working really hard on it, so if you have time, definitely go and check it out. Sounds good. We'll found some time in our schedule. Of course. See you later. What? Uh, are my eyes deceiving me? There is no way. I can't believe it. Hey, Mona! We heard you muttering from a long way away. What's up? Oh, is your scry glass acting up again? Oh, it's you, the saviors of this world. My scry glass is fine, but I'm not sure I can say the same about my eyes. Look! Look at this statue! What? Is it broken or something? Looks fine to Paimon. That's your master, right? A.K.A. the Goddess of Prophecy? Mm, I refuse to believe it. There's no way that old hag looks anything like this. When she was younger... Oh, actually, now that you mention it, this does remind me of the fashionista phase she wrote about in her diary. <laughs> she can't hear me, can she? I swear I just got chills down my spine. Uh, either way, it's probably a little rude to talk about her right under her statue. But how do you know it's a statue of her if you never saw her as a young woman? I did a quick scry when I came into this world, and when I saw the star's reflections, I was at a loss for words. It looks like fate in Simulaka is based directly on Tevat. A projection of real-world fate to form an image of reality. Or, in layman's terms, uh, basically, the creator made this world inside a mirror or a lake, and this world is the reflection. Still sounds pretty impressive. The more I scryed, the more familiar everything looked. It's her work, there's no doubt about it. Even so, everything's far more complex than I'd imagined. Trying to decipher it all is giving me quite a headache. I also asked the locals about her. They call her she who has dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. Not even a pretense of humility. Clearly, she let the role of creator goddess skip to her head. Not that I'm surprised in the least, of course. It certainly matches the tone of her diary. <clears throat> anyway, we should change the topic. Oh, so Mona, have you seen a small dragon around by any chance? He's about the same size as Paimon, but with tiny little wings. Ah, you mean the one that caused all that trouble? I haven't seen him for myself, but I heard that he came to the Metropole not long ago to formally apologize for his actions. Apparently, he brought a huge stash of titanium and plant oil to make amends. Most people accepted his apology, although there are some who said that they'll reserve judgment until they've seen how he acts in the future. Oh, okay. Do you know where we can find him? One moment. Looks like he's at the Broken Sea. There's a big group of people with him, too. Cool! Wanna come with us? We can introduce you! Hmm... I think I'll sit this one out. This might be the closest I ever get to meeting the old hag in our youth, so... I think I'll spend some time seeing what else I can glean from her grand design. Uh, you guys have fun. Anytime. We'll be off now. See you later, Mona! Osvaldo Hacknavines! Does thou see what I am seeing? Tell me that my all-perceiving Aug de Verertelung deceiveth me not! Your eyes see true, main Fräulein. Very well. Then, as sovereign ruler of the Imanachreich, I extend to you both my greetings, O Night Dragon from the Land of the Thousand Stars and his hat-wearing servant. Who did you just call a servant? What Main Fräulein means to say is, Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too! <laughs> but Hat Guy's not my servant. He's my friend! 
Ah, <sighs> now you're over explaining. Pack-Eye, Minnie Durin! Found you at last! Whoa, and Fischl's with you too? Oh, <laughs> greetings, Outlander, blessed by the Imanakreish. How honored you are to meet your princess and beneath the stars of another sky. Clearly a decision made by fate itself. Mr. Honorary Knight, Paimon! Greetings. You both look well. Hey there, Glee! Have you been having fun here? Yep, loads and loads of fun. There are so many cute animals and a magic train that was really long and a huge, huge castle and a king lives there and everything. I've been taking Klee to see all the sights. It's been a very enriching experience. Alice's magic is truly outstanding. Yeah, Mom's amazing. Klee wants to build a great big house now, too! So... your mom and my mom... were friends? Mm-hmm. Our moms were friends, which makes you my big brother! My mom used to read your mom's stories to me all the time. They were great! Big brother? Wow! Thank you, Klee! Can I go play with Klee, Hat Guy? Suit yourself. Albedo! Albedo, can I? Go on. Uh, just don't go too far away. I'll come pick you up later. Yay! Come on, Minnie Durin! Do you want to come play with us too, Fischl? <laughs> your princess and accepts your invitation. <gasps> Rejoice! Though you may be concealed by fog, still you shall have the good fortune to witness the true might of the Aug de Bertelang. What Mame Fräulein means to say is, perhaps we can all play hide-and-seek together. Mame Fräulein is it. <laughs> Hooray! I love hide-and-seek! Oh, me too! To return to our previous discussion, Mr. Hat Guy, you were telling me about a prophecy? I heard B talking to M. What she said was... Since you're so persistent, let me tell you a secret. Our child will one day rise from the dead. Uh, is she saying... Dragonspine Durin will come back to life? I only heard it in a memory, so don't hold me to it. Understood. My recent observations at Dragonspine lend credence to this prophecy as well. Durin's heart has slowly but surely been growing in vitality. The process is extremely slow, but the trend is clear. Uh, what should we do? To start with, plan for every potential scenario. Including, of course, the worst case scenario. <sighs> I am well aware of Durin's past, and I sincerely hope that things never escalate to that point. Still, we need to be prepared for every possibility. If the prophecy is true, and Durin's heart will one day beat again, I'd like to hope that whatever rises from the dead is no evil dragon, if you understand what I mean. Kind of? But not really. And so, when the time comes, Mr. Hat Guy, will you and Simulanka's Durin be willing to lend us a hand in our hour of need? Huh? What's this got to do with me? You saved the Durin of this world. I don't see that as a mere coincidence. If there is any meaning to be read into the actions of the three goddesses, beyond fairy tale whimsy alone, I can only boldly speculate that the fate of this reflected world may have a reciprocal effect upon our own world. 
If Durin of Dragonspine will soon come back to life, we will need many Durin's help, as well as yours, given that your fates are now intertwined. <sighs> well, that's a nuisance. To be sure, it certainly won't be easy. Albedo, Albedo! There's a flying paper ship over there! Can we go see it together, please? Sure. Uh, two seconds, I'll be right with you. Please give my suggestion some thought, Mr. Hat Guy. <sighs> Hat Guy, I'm back! Huh? What were you guys talking about? <sighs> Nothing. Huh. Okay, then. Let's go join the others. Everyone's going to check out the new origami ship. <sighs> All right. I'll be right there. Why would I be? Do I strike you as someone who cares about other people's issues? Quit trying to guess what I'm thinking. I'm leaving. The forest fairy helped us make it! Paimon just realized there's a lot fewer people around the Broken Sea now. Guess most of them have made their way back to the Metropole. Does this boat have a name? I can't see one anywhere. Huh? A name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every boat has a name. At least, all the ones I've seen before. They're usually symbolic names that represent something aspirational. Hmm. Let's go with... the Durin. Huh? You want to name it after me? Oh, you mean to wish Mini Durin a safe voyage as he sails into a new chapter of his life beyond this world? Your princessin approves. Let this vessel bear the name of the most esteemed dragon of the night. The Turin. <laughs> Let's call it that then. Thank you, hat guy. Also, can I ask you a favor? Go on. Remember how mom's friend said I should be able to leave this world? Well, I want to pay a visit to your world. Just a quick trip, can we? Huh? Uh, is... is that a no? Paimon thinks that's a great idea! If the people of Simulanka are allowed to go to Tevat, then what's the problem with taking Mini Durin there for a visit? I'm assuming I'll have to be your bodyguard while we're there. I... I can protect myself! And I'll do what you say. I won't fly off on my own, I promise! Please, can I go? It'll be up to you to stick close. If you disappear on me, don't expect me to come looking. Got it! I'll stick close! Why don't you take the Durin? Now you've given it a name, it'll be a maiden voyage for the boat, and a brand new journey for you. Are you leaving, Mini Durin? Okay. Well, make sure you come visit me in Mondstadt so we can play together again. Clee will draw you a map to show you the way. Though our time together has been as fleeting as a ray of light in the depths of the long night, the Imanokreish will welcome you with the grandest of music ceremonies on the occasion of our next reunion. As surely as the stars in the sky watch over us, we shall meet again. What Main Fräulein means is that you're always welcome to visit her at home as well. Cool! Ah, oh, I have so many new friends now! I'm so happy! <sighs> Are you done yet? If you want to leave, then get over here. Thank you, everyone! Thank you so much! The blessings you gave me are more precious than any treasure, and more beautiful than any fairy tale! Next time, it will be my turn to make your wishes come true! <laughs>